Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is JP, and we're looking at the call to action with an ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. This is from the same guys who make the Astra theme called Brainstorm Force. And it's early in the morning, so my tongue just wants to fall around. Everything feels like a tongue twister this morning. The call to action allows you to have a heading, a description, as well as a button in one place, calling people to action to click on it. Now, this element within the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg is free. You can download it from the WordPress repository. After you've installed it, it will be available within the WordPress editor. Let's build it out, do it practical instead of going through each and every setting, and you will see how this works. Go to the back end, and I've created this part for our call to action. To add it, go here to add block, and most used, let's go here to ultimate add-ons block, and you can look for the call to action here. If you cannot find it, though it's over there, let's just close it, go up here and just type call to action. Click on it and it will insert the call to action. Immediately you have a great call to action here. You can highlight the text, sign up for our newsletter, and then leave the lorem ipsum text here, and then here you have a button, and that's how your call to action works. It's a section, that draws the attention and then asks your visitor to click here on the button, which will take them somewhere. It's an action they have to take. That's why it's called call to action. Let's update it in this very vanilla way and go and look at it on the front end, how it will look. And it looks just like we would expect it to look. But let's jazz it up. This is boring, right? I will add a background. Now, you cannot add a background to the call to action element. To do that, you can bring in another element also from add-ons. And what I will do is I will look for one called advanced columns. You can see it's here because I use it all the time. But again, you go to ultimate add-on blocks and you look for advanced columns. It's there. If you do not see it like before, you can just type a keyword like columns. Here is the one for the WordPress editor. And here is the one that comes from ultimate add-ons. I'm going to use this one. Click on it and it comes in with two columns in the advanced columns block. I'm only going to use one, but I have to use it because I want that background. Currently, it has selected this first column, and I don't want that column, so I can try and click here to select the advanced columns. You know that you have selected that container. If you look here on the right, you will see it says advanced columns, then you know you have selected it. Over here where it says columns, let's reduce it to one. Next, I'm going to go to my call to action, click to interact with it, go to the handle on the left, click and drag, and until you see the blue line appears here within that column, and you drop it. I'll go back to my advanced columns, and in the sidebar on the right, go to background, and background type, I'm going to select image. Select background image, and from the media library, let's grab this one over here and select and add it. I cannot see the call to action now because everything is dark. So just click in there and let's go and change some of the colors. So I'll go to the content first. This is my heading. I'll put that on white. Put it on white, make sure. And then the next one is the description. Custom color, also put that on white. And then we go for our button, also change the colors. And I will change the text color to white. And then I'm going to change the border also to white. What I'll do for the button, I'll also add a hover effect. So the background color, I will choose here and make it white. And then the text for the hover, I will go make that dark. Let's see how this will look on the front end. There we go. A very nice call to action. But we need a little bit of separation there. And to add separation, and separation allows you to draw in your viewer to that specific content. To do that, we need to add space around it. So we have to add padding inside. Click on your advanced columns, and then we go to spacing. And then you can add some padding to the top and the bottom and the left and the right. I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's make that 50, 35, 50, 
and 35. Let's update that and we should have more space now if we go to the front end. Looks much better. We've created a very nice call to action here. Let's go and do another one. I'll bring in the advanced columns again. Because I have selected it previously, it should already be in my most used. Advanced columns over here, and I'll stick to two columns this time. I'm going to give the advanced columns the entire area one color. And I want to use this color here from the front. This, what is this? A rosy, bay, no, it must be rosy, peachy, something. I'll grab my color picker up here, hover over it, click, and then I'm going to copy that code there. Go to the back end and then select my advanced columns. Let's find our background over here. And we say it's color and custom color added here. Control Command V. Let's bring in an image. So we click in the first column here and you can just choose the normal WordPress image. From the media library, we grab a nice looking image over here. And then we bring in the call to action here in the right column. Call to action. Nice. You can already see where we are going with this. I want to bring this into the middle. To do so, I'm going to add padding to the column. Make sure you didn't select call to action. You have to go one up to the column. You can click here. You'll find the column. If you cannot click and find that column, simply go up here to what we call the block navigation. Click on that, and here you will see you can select the column. Now that I have the column, go to spacing, and then I'm going to add the padding here. Let's say around 150. Uh, we can make it 200. You may think bringing in the spacer would be a good idea, but you're going to see the problem with the spacer is that it is not responsive. If I'm going to look at this on a tablet and on a cell phone, the spacer is not going to work. I cannot make adjustments. Whereas here, within these settings for the ultimate add-ons, I have control over the desktop, tablet, and mobile. Over here, you have the full actions again that you can go through. This time, if you go to layout, you will see your button position is normal, but I can put it on stack. That's a very nice way, so now it's on stack. Our content, the same thing. Let's make the call to action a little bit bigger. Let's put it on the H1. That's pretty big. And you can even make changes here. You can still have it on H3. Go into your topography and make your own standard settings. So let's put that on 48. Make it a nice big one over there. And you can do the same for your description. I think that is fine. Our button also looks fine. Then we go to spacing. And here you can add space between these various elements. I just want to add a little bit more space here between the bottom margin and the button. And we're almost good to go. I say almost. Let's update it and go view it on the front end because we need to add a little bit of space there between these two elements. Here we go. And you see... Here, I want to add space, and up here, I want to add space between these two sections. This one I'm going to do with a margin, and this one I'll do with padding. Let's go back, and I'll select my advanced columns. Go to spacing, and then I look for the margin. Margins are the areas between sections, whereas padding is the area within a section. So with this margin, I'll increase the space to 100 pixels so we have that separation. Then I come here to my column. Make sure I select columns. Go to spacing, and now I'll add padding here to the left. And I'll add about, let's say, 35. You see it moved a little bit to the right. This is going to look much better now when you view it on the front end. There's the space. And there's the space for that. What is important though, you need to go and check how this will display on a tablet and a cell phone. Here on my Blisk browser, I'm going to enable developer mode. Go over here to favorites and let's start with our iPad. Why I'm starting with the iPad is that within the WordPress editor and within Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, it follows a top-down rule, desktop, tablet, and then cell phone. 
which means if I make any changes to my tablet, that is also translated onto my cell phone. So it's important that you work first on your desktop, then go to tablet, and after that, you go to your cell phone. Let's start with this one at the top, sign up for our newsletter. Currently, this is not stacked. You see the button is on the right, this one is stacked, but I would like for my tablet to look similar to my desktop. Go to the back end, let's go to here, click on it to interact with it, and then you will see stack on and it says from tablet. I only wanted to start stacking from mobile. On mobile, we usually stack things, but here I only want to stack it from that position of a mobile. If I update it and I go to the front end, you will see now that it is also aligned to the right for the button. I think this looks good for both of them. Let's go to the next one. And now we have this problem that I have, what was it, 200 pixels or 150 pixels that I added here, that's also added here. It doesn't look good. We go to the back and we click here on our column. That is where we had applied that padding. Click on spacing and you see we had set it at 200. Now next to the desktop, you select tablet and let's put it on 50. Update it. And then you have to go check it again on the front end. That looks better. You can even make it 40 or 30 if you wanted to. Let's do that. I'm going to put it at 35. Update it again. And this is how you work with the WordPress editor. Back, front, back, front, back, front. Go and check it again. That looks good. Now that we are happy with our tablet display for this call to action, let's see how it will display on a mobile device. Let's wait for it to load. And here you can see it is stacked. I think stack is good for cell phones. Leave it like that. Again, the same you're going to find for your call to action over here. It is stacked now, but you're going to see that we have a little bit too much space there. And maybe this call to action here is too big, the text. So let's go and change these two. Go to the back. Make sure that you have selected your column. And then you go here to your cell phone, and I'll just add about five pixels. For our call to action, this text, click on the call to action text, go to content, and then here topography for the heading, select the little spanner. The font size, select the cell phone, and let's put it on 24. Update, and go view our handiwork, and things look very, very well in the land of call to action. There you go. And this is how you build out the call to action. There's a lot of features within this call to action that you can play around with. We've looked at the layout, the content, and you have all the styling over the button that you have in all the other elements as well, and then the spacing. The call to action is a very, very useful element to have. It helps you to draw the attention of your visitor, of your site, and tell him, hey, you need to click here. It's going to take you somewhere. And with that, you're either going to subscribe or get something, or you're going to win a prize. Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg from the same team that brings you the Astra theme. Go check it out in the WordPress repository. See you in the next video. I am JP.